Hi everyone, it's Mrs Goodwin with your next virtual assembly looking at the theme of equality with a focus on Pride Month. So what is Pride Month? It's a celebration of LGBTQ plus communities highlighting past and existing issues that these communities can face. If you're not sure what LGBTQ plus stands for, it's lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, questioning or queer, and then plus, which represents all the other sexual identities, um, including things like pansexual, asexual, omnisexual. So some of those words you may have never heard of before. I'm not gonna go through them in great detail in this assembly because this could go on. It's a, it's a huge topic and I'm, I'm going to talk about how as a school we'll cover this in more detail and um, once you're back with us or with ongoing PSHE work. But the main thing is for the purpose of this assembly to understand that LGBTQ plus is the accepted, accepted and inclusive way to refer to the queer community who are grouped by the common theme that they don't identify as straight or cisgender. So it's quite an all-encompassing term. We're going to use it um, to talk about communities as a whole. As I say, there are some issues that particularly affect one part of that community. For example, there are trans issues that people will face um, that perhaps gay people will not. And so we, again, can't explore that in full detail in this assembly today, but it will give you an overview and hopefully a bit of an insight into why it's so important that we still teach this, talk about it, um, and continually learn and empathise. Now, you know that our assemblies over the last month or so have all been on the theme of equality. We had the Black Lives Matter assembly, which we um, obviously brought into this assembly um, rota very quickly in response to the news, and then had our British Values assembly. Um, as I say, the British Values Assembly and our Pride Assembly were always planned as part of this rota because June is such an important month for, for the Pride movement, but we obviously needed to make sure we were responding to key issues. So it's part of our core values, it underpins everything we do. So we should never be teaching any of these as a one-off assembly, and we certainly don't see it that way. It's built into our PSHE curriculum and what we do as a school. So obviously built into that, we have the phrases that we need high expectations of ourselves and others so that we would never um, treat people badly. So we don't tolerate bullying, we don't tolerate unkindness, that we are open-minded, we're respectful, and that we make positive contributions within school, which is our um, local community, maybe our national community as a country, and then our global community. So actually looking out for issues across the world, which we'll talk about a little bit about today. So these underpin our school. And now that doesn't mean that everything is always perfect within a school. And again, we'll talk about that a little bit today. But what's really important is that we know that we are aiming to hold ourselves to the high standards and we must act quickly and decisively where necessary to make changes. And we do that by listening to people who report issues and um, by sampling student voice. Um, and we constantly try and adapt our teaching beyond the classroom um, and within the classroom, particularly within PSHE. Um, hence all the changes to your PSHE curriculum doing our drop down days and things like that. So we are a rights respecting school. So that again underpins what we do. We do put that value on meeting the rights of all the children within our school but also teaching you about those rights so that you can apply them to anything in life this is so important this goes well beyond the grades you come out with at school this is making sure that you are an, a, a, a citizen who looks after other people that you'll be a good boss one day that you will always treat people fairly and this these rights underpin everything that matters to children that you have a right to identity, and that includes your identity in terms of your gender, your sexual orientation. And then, it, you know, slightly bigger there, I've put that you have a right not to be discriminated against. So we need to have that reminder of what discrimination is. It's the unfair, unjust treatment of people, and that can include on the basis of sex. Um, prejudice is where you have those unfair, unreasonable opinions, and what we need to do is make sure this never turns into discrimination, because it's often formed without thought and knowledge, and the more education we get, the better we are at ensuring our actions are fair and reasoned. Now, stereotypes are also a really dangerous thing. They can be incredibly harmful stereotypes, because it means you believe things that aren't always true you categorize whole groups in sweeping statements and that's not fair because it doesn't recognize people as individuals so we need to make sure that we have an understanding of those terms and that we work to overcome them 
So we've talked before about protected characteristics. Obviously, in the Black Lives Matter assembly, we were particularly looking at ethnicity. But you'll notice how many of these apply to Pride Month now. Sex, gender reassignment, sexual orientation, and then even marriage and civil partnership and you know, even rules about maternity and having children that we haven't, you know, we won't really go into too much today. But the basics of this is that you're not allowed to be discriminated against, and particularly on the basis of these protected characteristics. So you have a right to feel and think a certain way, and nobody is allowed to, for example, um, not give you a job as a result of it, or allowed to treat you unfairly because of it. So these rules are already in place. We have human rights um, that we looked at, obviously things like no discrimination. Then we have the protected characteristics, that's in place. So why do we need Pride Month at all? If it's already in law, why do we need it? And this is a phrase I used with the Black Lives Matter Assembly. If you've asked that question, you probably have your answer. Because it may be a privilege for you not to have to worry about these. If you live a life that is considered widely acceptable and what people might use the phrase normal or expected, if you live that kind of life, then actually you might not have to give it a second thought. It might not be any additional pressure to bring your partner home to meet your parents or it might be and it might be because of beliefs that people have about the person you bring home and the type of relationship you're having so for example if you are a straight young person or adult then you will have conversations with people about getting married and you won't really think twice about that whereas if you are gay or another queer sexual orientation then you might have to give that a lot more thought um, depending on the country you live that might actually be illegal to talk about marriage because you might not be able to get married um, that might not be something that you'd be allowed to do or it might be something that's a real additional pressure in terms of telling your family that you have found somebody who is perhaps the same gender as you so if you don't have to worry about that then you know that's really great for you that that's not an additional worry but we need to recognize that for other people it really is so we have to listen we have to learn and we have to empathize we have to accept that some people do have additional pressures we need to look at how we help them to overcome it so listen learn empathize so there are lots and lots of laws that we could talk about that specifically affect lgbtq plus you'll notice though that as i talk about some of these laws um, a lot of it talks about sex between two men. So we talk about homosexual and we talk about, um, so the term gay isn't always used, it's the, the term homosexual. Um, the issues though um, affect the whole community because it wasn't really widely known that there may be different um, sex and genders and that's something that's really come about much more recently. But So when we talk about these things, just remember it does apply to the community as a whole, although certain laws affect some people more than others so for example there are specific rules that may affect trans people more than if you were gay or lesbian so in 1533 we had the first law to ever specifically outlaw sex between two men and we were executing people for it until 1835 that went down to life imprisonment still terrible for you know for having sex as two men and not being allowed to express yourself and have a relationship with somebody you loved um and in 1885, the term gross indecency was put into one law. And that basically meant gross indecency was considered to be homosexual sex. So unfortunately, it, it carried on that it was still something in law that you could not do. Oscar Wilde, you may have heard of him. He was a, a very famous author. He was actually somebody who was convicted of gross indecency and he had to do two years hard labour and he, he died not long after that. Um, we then had a journalist all the way you know, into 1955. There was a journalist who got 18 months in prison um, and he published a book that actually normalised, I think, the taboo around same-sex relationships. And he was one of a lot of people that openly testified um, in a, an inquiry that ultimately recommended that we stopped criminalising homosexuality. That's in 1955, you know, that's certainly in my mum's lifetime. Um, and in 1957, eventually it was agreed that homosexual acts between consenting men over the legal age, which was 21 at the time, shouldn't be a matter for the law. So it took until 1957 for this inquiry to suggest that it shouldn't be anything that we criminalise and, you know, that it's not in law. But this is obviously in the UK. 
So, unfortunately, in 1967, um, although it said that in English, England and Wales, Scotland didn't follow suit until 1980 and Northern Ireland until 1982. But even though it was properly you know, decriminalised at that point, MPs at the time still used terms that things like homosexuality being, homosexuality being a disability or a great weight of shame. So this showed how much work there was still to do because we had to protect LGBTQ plus people in law, but also in terms of the understanding and to ensure there's no prejudice or discrimination that exists because we can see still in 1967, there are lots of issues. And we had to do all of that history to be able to talk about what comes next, which are the Stonewall riots or the Stonewall uprising. So this happened in 1969, um, which was where, where the police raided a place called the Stonewall Inn, which was a gay club in Greenwich Village. And it led to riots for people that were in that bar, um, which obviously was a gay, a gay club, a gay bar. And it led to marches and protests and riots. And there were, it, you know, it was, it was, not, a, it was not a pretty sight. Um, but the message was clear. They wanted somewhere where they could go and be open about their sexual orientation. Because of course, this is just a couple of years after it was decriminalized. It wasn't, it wasn't as if everybody then suddenly felt they could be themselves and be really open about their sexuality. There was a lot of misinformation still. There was a lot of bias and prejudice still. There was discrimination still happening. As we know from the Jim Crow laws in America um, and you know laws that were in place over here, when something changes in law, it doesn't mean that everybody is suddenly on board and okay with it. And negative stereotypes still exist. So we can see that here, the law changed but people's opinions didn't necessarily. And that's why it's so important that although you have laws in place to protect people, education is still really important and talking about these issues is still really important because to really make change, you have to do both. You have to have it in law and you have to educate people and talk openly about it. So as a result of these riots, um, it then turned into something really positive um, and there was a bisexual activist called Brenda Howard. She was known as the Mother of Pride and a year after the Stonewall riots she organised Gay Pride Week and a parade. And this is what we know now as the New York City Pride March and you might have seen the ones in Brighton for example. There are marches now across the world. Um, the New York one is the largest. Over 2 million people were estimated to have been there in 2019. Obviously, we can't compare the figures this year because of social distancing, um, but it's really important that we still celebrate, that we still talk about it. So there's you know, certainly lots going on in the online community um, to celebrate this month because it did, lead to, it did lead to change and more visibility for people in the LGBTQ plus communities. So after these marches began, in 1972, there were 2,000 gay men and women that marched in London's first Pride Parade, which seemed like real steps forward. And then in 1988, Margaret Thatcher introduced an amendment that actually banned schools from teaching or promoting, and the wording is, the acceptability of homosexuality as a pretended family relationship. So having decided that it was decriminalised, having made all these steps forward, schools were then banned from teaching it in a positive light, um, to teaching children all about it. And of course, this did cause a lot of outrage. And it's where Stonewall UK came from, because they were reacting to these feelings of discrimination and unfairness. And that section 28 was eventually repealed um, in Scottish and in Scottish law in 2000 and then England and Wales and eventually Northern Irish law. So schools actually are now allowed to teach about it um, and we'll get onto that more in the next slide. Then we had some really positive steps forward um, that same sex couples were allowed to enter same sex unions. Um, it would be called a civil partnership. And then eventually in 2014, gay couples were actually allowed to call it a marriage. That didn't come into effect in Northern Ireland though until 2020, just this year. Um, so you can see that it's taken a long time for some laws to come into effect and for changes to, to really have been made. And just as a point of interest, it took until 2015 for same-sex marriages to be made legal in the US states. So you can see all very recent um, in some states, in some countries. So there's still obviously work to be done. So the other thing that's really relevant to young people is that the statutory guidance which comes into place um, in September 2020 is that now 
um, it's really important that we do teach about LGBTQ relationships. Um, but the wording is LGBT and the government insists that it expects all pupils to have been taught LGBT content at a timely point during relationships and sex education. So it should never be a standalone topic. It shouldn't just be, um, for example, it wouldn't just be this assembly saying, here is what LGBTQ plus means. Here are some issues. Here is what it can, you know, here's what it's like. And, you know, it's just a, a one off topic. It's actually should be taught as part of relationships. So when you talk about positive relationships, we can talk about the fact that there can be very positive relationships between same sex couples. There can be very positive relationships, um, for example, in adopted um, situations where um, children are adopted to same sex families all of that so you should always be talking about it and when you do sex education that actually you should rec you know you should at an appropriate time um, so obviously we're really talking in secondary school um, that obviously you would include that as part of your education and so that's really important and obviously very very different to the situation in 1988 where actually we were told you definitely couldn't teach it you know now as an expectation you definitely do teach it so that's a really positive step forward and like I say this assembly is not is not the only time that we would ever mention it so the laws across the world are different everywhere um, there are still some countries that punish homosexuality with the death penalty um, so I'll show you this list um, that these jurisdictions still talk about having the death penalty um, for homosexuality um, if you look at them actually most of them haven't actually enacted that rule for a long time but it's still in law. So you can imagine that people in those places would not want to be openly gay, would not want to, certainly wouldn't want to come out to their families, let alone employers, friends, communities. This is still very much a global issue. And that's why we have that phrase, global citizens. We need to recognize this is going on across the world. And just because things are better in the UK, not necessarily across the UK, um, you know, there's different rules that are passed at different times, but we need to recognise this is still an ongoing issue for the LGBTQ plus community. Now, this map is ever so slightly out of date, but I thought it was interesting to show you that there are different rules in, and different laws in different places. So although the death penalty is in place in some places, sometimes it is imprisonment, sometimes it's that they have a different age of consent. So we have different expectations for when they enter sexual relationships. Um, whether they are allowed to get married. So you can see the range of rules and laws that can affect people. It's not just about whether they are allowed to actually have a relationship, it's also how we recognize those relationships. So like I say, this is ever so slightly out of date, but I just thought it was a really good visual representation to show that the issues are different in each um, country. And sometimes the rules are, you know, the majority is that, yep, absolutely exactly the same rights as straight or cisgender people but sometimes not. So like I say, slightly out of date, but gives you an idea of the kind of issues we're looking at. Um, now, actually new rules are coming in place all the time. And I thought this was really interesting because there's a new rule, a new law in, Jap in a region of Japan that actually says you're no longer allowed to out LGBTQ plus people without their permission. And the reason this has come up is because if you have a system like Track or Trace, Obviously, if you track and trace people, you would have to find out who they've been with in the last couple of weeks. And there was a concern that obviously by doing that, you might unintentionally out people because they may have been at a gay bar or they may have been visiting somebody um, to have a relationship with. And you are not allowed to out them as a result of that. It, it's totally your personal choice when you choose to tell anybody about yourself. Um, and this protects people. Um, we won't, you know, you won't be able to find out in this region of Japan, like I say, this isn't across the board, but it stops you feeling coerced into telling people your sexual orientation, your gender, etc., before you feel ready. So I thought that was really interesting because this has come about just during the coronavirus. So things are constantly changing and evolving. So education has to try and keep up with these changes as well. So now that we've done the history, we need to look at um, pride itself what that means because obviously this is pride month so you have to talk about pride as part of it but you needed to know why we celebrate well we celebrate all those steps forward that we've made and it's also about constantly reminding people that there are still issues that are ongoing and you know as we're learning over the past month we can't just ignore issues and pretend they don't exist we have to face them head on and listen learn and empathize so the pride flag said that each colour represented something different um, and actually 
Baker, who came up with the flag, said that um, each colour represented things like pink for sex, red for life, orange for healing, yellow for the sun, green for nature, turquoise for magic, blue for serenity, purple for the spirit. And the phrase was that actually those elements might be in every person. Everyone shares those. Um, but the six stripe flag we're most familiar with was actually caused because it was really difficult to get pink and turquoise fabric um, at, during a brief period. So um, that's why it has changed to the six colours that we often associate with pride. However, in 2017, More Colour, More Pride actually added two extra colours of black and brown. And this is to really recognise um, people of colour. Now, the reason that these topics go together in some ways is that... Um, Black people, um, people of colour, um, are more likely to face transphobia, homophobia, are more likely to be negative effect, negatively affected by laws because they may live in countries where those laws are still in place. So, for example, where the death penalty is still in place, um, they are more likely to be victims of crime. And so those statistics are there to recognise that there is almost um, a double disadvantage at times for people that are of colour, black or brown, um, and to recognise that we have to do more for members of the, you know that community who may be in both communities so it adds those two extra stripes um now i obviously have spoken to students about this assembly and asked them things that were helpful um posts that have been helpful and this was one that um we came up with or that, that we found and there in the conversations that i had the conversation was that particularly as a teenager there are lots of questions going around and there are feelings that you may not have experienced before and particularly as a teenager when you hit puberty and hormones come into play um, that this is where you really do question things and you might question things and decide that you are cisgender or straight um, but you might be thinking actually I have an attraction to both boys and girls and you know you might also think well, actually, I just feel like I, I don't quite fit in some ways. And this is where you might be trying to find resources or names that relate to you and your unique feelings and thoughts. So it's really important that you have access to resources to help you as you figure out your identity. Um, that's, that's the case for all aspects of your identity. You should have support to decide the adult that you would like to be. Um, because this is a, a huge time of change for you but you might have had some of these feelings for a really long time so it's really unhelpful for people to say it's just a phase um, and that's something we do hear a lot particularly when people talk about having feelings perhaps for a different gender than maybe was expected and so it is important that we don't see it as just a phase and that we recognize that you may have feelings that previously we didn't couldn't find the words for so Pride Month looks, um, each day of Pride Month, there's a focus on a different aspect of the LGBTQ plus community. Now, there were phrases on here I had never heard of before. Um, and like I say, I'm not going to go through them all now, but it's important to realise that there are now so many different names that you can use to describe feelings you may have. And this might be overwhelming to people that have never looked at this topic before. And it, you know, it might seem something that you you struggle to get your head around but for people who have had feelings and felt unable to classify them easily there are so many terms on here that the hope is that one of them will speak to you and will help you to feel confident in expressing your identity because we know you have a right to an identity and so it's important that you actually know what that identity is um, you might not figure it out straight away but it's important that if you feel ready to kind of give it a label of some sort that you have that available to you you might prefer not to label yourself and that's also fine um but obviously the lgbtq plus um you know particularly with the plus and the word queer the idea being that you can that you can think about that and but you recognize that you're perhaps maybe not straight or cisgender so like i say lots there that you could google and look up um if it was something that you wanted to know a little bit more about the other thing that people asked me to include in this assembly um, was this thing about preferred pronouns. Because for some people, they felt that they didn't quite fit with she or he. 
and so it's really important we understand that there is a, a gender neutral pronoun they them or theirs so that when you're introduced to somebody if they say their preferred pronoun is they or them that you would refer to them as they are a doctor being important is important to them and sometimes we use that as a plural as well um, so there are two people they are doctors but obviously in this case it's they are a doctor it's one person but they don't identify with just she or he and it's important that you respect somebody if they tell you that they are their preferred pronouns again it might not be something you understand but it that doesn't mean you shouldn't respect it of other people so um, again something that you can look into a little bit more um, if you're interested in it but definitely something that you must respect if it is if it's said to you that they would prefer to be called they um, so prejudice and discrimination we've talked all about those laws well what does it look like now um, there have been concerns that during pride month particularly in a time where we're mainly online that there will be negative group pop popping up so everyone can do their part in reporting or blocking suspicious pages particularly if they share homophobic content and um, look out for new or empty accounts so ones with AI generated faces so in other words trolling accounts so look out for those um, there is you know there can often be nasty content online so if you are concerned about anything you can report them um, using the normal measures and um, but just be aware that obviously there there could potentially be more harmful content online um, where obviously you can't necessarily you're not going to the pride events but there might be stuff online so it's important for us to look at the language we use in school have you ever heard the phrase that's gay used um, as a phrase when something's considered maybe annoying because I have I have heard that phrase and I have heard boys being accused of being gay um, perhaps if they um, have traits that someone considers stereotypically gay so for example if a boy um, I don't know has been particularly upset at something I've heard that's gay being used as an insult and I do think um, I do think that boys can sometimes be a victim of this more than girls but it's certainly not just an issue for boys neither th those phrases are not acceptable that is homophobic bullying and it's important that we recognize that in the playground um, and call it out call it out when we hear it both with our peers and to say to people don't don't say that it's not it's not cool but also that you report it and that you have confidence that if it's said to you and it makes you feel hurt and upset that you report it if it hasn't made you feel hurt and upset and you just think it's part of the kind of normal things that people say you should still report it because actually it's really important that we know the issues that you are facing as young people even if we deal with it through general education that we put on an extra assembly we put it in a thought for the week you should never have to put up and shut up is the phrase I often use with my own year group I don't expect you to ever suffer in silence with anything that's going on in schools you need to tell us um, and some people don't like to report issues but it's important that you do, even if it doesn't just affect you, because it might affect somebody much more negatively than it did you. They might be much more upset by it. We need to make sure that we're fully prepared for that and that we know the issues within our school and can respond to it. So like I say, it's definitely something that I've heard said before, and we obviously will deal with that in our PSHE curriculum. So it'll be ongoing work that we do. I hope this assembly goes some way into making you if you are somebody that has used that phrase before and thinks now oh, I do say that quite a lot hopefully it's given you a bit of food for thought about why you know brandishing that as an insult or just a flippant comment is just not appropriate and it's really important that you keep listening learning and empathizing so it is important you listen to the experience of people who may think or feel very differently to you because we have to understand and accept everybody you know it doesn't mean that you have to agree with everything that other people think but you are not allowed to discriminate on the basis of those opinions. And actually those opinions, you have to be careful, do not become hate speech or something that is considered bullying. Because actually, not only is it illegal, um, which is obviously the, the big thing there, it is illegal. Um, and it's also something that won't be tolerated at school. So we need to make sure we keep holding people to account when they say stuff like that and make sure that the education is there to explain to them why it's wrong and why it cannot happen again. And I loved that that quotation on the sign there that the world is changed by your example not your opinion your opinion may be um, different to your outward perception if you do have those thoughts and feelings um, it's important that you still treat people kindly never discriminate and you don't let those thoughts ever ever negatively affect other people um, even if you've decided that it's not the way that you are going to do something so 
These quotations were actually sent in by students, um, particularly, I think, in response to Black Lives Matter, but I think they're so important here as well. We shared them on our social media page when we shared our Black Lives Matter posts, but I think it can be applied here. Don't be upset that you don't have a movement. Be glad you don't need one. Um, Pride Month is important that we look at pride. We look at the issues facing LGBTQ+. Yes, there are issues that affect straight people, issues, uh, issues that affect straight women, straight men, but it's so important that we recognise that there is a history that affects LGBTQ plus people more so than straight people, um, and this movement is therefore all the more important. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. We can't be silent about this, we can't be silent about what goes on in schools, and we can't be silent about what goes on in our communities, both local, national, globally. Um, but make sure you're not staying silent. Talk to us, tell us what you think we need. I'm really grateful to those students I worked with who sent me in ideas and talked to me about their thoughts and feelings and what we should share, um, because it is important that you feel this assembly says what you need it to say as well. Don't ignore something because it makes you feel uncomfortable. If you hear people using language that doesn't feel right, you can come and report things without your name being used. Um, that is supporting your community, that's real support, isn't it? Standing up even when you're a little bit nervous to do so. Um, and talk to your teachers and they'll be able to help you through it. And justice will not be served until those who are unaffected are as outraged as those who are. Sometimes when issues don't affect us, we don't show much interest in it. And it's only when something personally affects us that we start to wake up and think, maybe I should listen. And that's, I think, again, something the Black Lives Matter um, movement really kind of highlighted. Well, we need to make sure the same happens with, with all issues where people face discrimination who are unfairly treated, um, even if they don't affect you. You know, we should have, you know, we hope that everybody cared about the fact that same-sex marriage was legalised, even if it was something that wouldn't have affected your life, it might have affected those of your friends and those you cared about. As always, um, this assembly is a very personal one. Um, it's, it brings up probably lots of different issues. If you have any concerns at all, contact your year team leaders, so your heads of year, your, your student support officers, your tutor, or one of the safeguarding leads. And there are tons of, there's tons of further advice, resources um, available to you. Reach out to us and let us know if you're struggling a little bit or if you'd like some more information. As always, I hope this assembly provided you some food for thought. It's a nice way to reach out to you during this time. Obviously, we can't deliver face-to-face -face assemblies in the hall, but I hope it's a way of still raising really, really important topics um, as and when they come up. And obviously, June being Pride Month, it's really important that we did this assembly now. So thank you so much, as always, for listening. Um, I know it's another long one, but as always, with the, the topics that really matter, sometimes they are, um, and we can't gloss over them. We have to do them in full. Like I say, though, even now, there's so much I haven't had a chance to explore, but we will do that during your PSHE education, during your whole time with us at King John. Um, we're committed to doing more and making sure that your voice is heard and that the issues affecting you are covered. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.